Hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much for joining me today. Let me make sure that you can hear me uh, before I get too far along. Let me know where you're coming in from below. I still don't see it going live. It says it's live, but I don't see it yet on my phone. Perfect. And so awesome. Okay. So yay. It's Sunday. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. Tomorrow's going to be Monday. And yes, I am excited. It's Monday because it's a start to a new week. Things are going to be awesome, right? Uh, you decide how the course of your future goes, right? Including how you react to it and how you respond. And today, I'm excited because it's Sunday. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, um, for those of you that who may not know me, my name is Cassandra. I'm also known as the Daily Wealth Ninja. Um, I have a full-time day job as a programmer. I have a business where I provide coaching on digital marketing, such as um, social media, Facebook, um, ads, things and that like. And I'm also learning Forex. So... <laughs> Uh, today, I'm sharing Forex because Forex is the single most skill set that I've ever found that allows you to create your dream life without having to be a salesperson. And most people don't want to do sales. They have a lot of negative just gunk in their head about salespeople, right? And so if you want to create more wealth, you have to you have to find something that does that for you. Hey, Holly. Hey, Anne. And so Forex is that one of those possibilities because, like I said, most people are weird about sales. So why not just avoid that altogether and start working on that, right? So today is Sunday and therefore I am giving out my outlook for the week on a few of the pairs. And so how do I choose these pairs? Um, with the membership that I'm a part of, it teaches me about not only how to trade, um, but it also provides me tools with which to make more educated decisions, as well as direct mentorship over 60 plus hours live every week, and also the community of traders that I can reach out to and ask questions and, and you know get feedback from. So these trades that I'm sharing with you today were actually made using the tools that I use to find them. And so it's something called a harmonic scanner. Basically, it does all the work for it. Well, not all the work, but it does a good portion of the work for you by scanning multiple different brokers. Brokers are basically the people that you have to go through in order to make these types of trades, these types of financial decisions. And by the way, as it says up here, hey, Teresa, thank you so much for joining me today from Missouri. Appreciate it. Um, so as it says up here, I am not a licensed financial advisor. Everything that I share with you is simply for educational purposes only. Your um, future potential um, wins or losses is not dependent upon anything more than your education and your actions. Um, past results do not guarantee nor dictate your future success. I'm simply sharing with you what's possible. And so, like I said, this tool just scours you know, these multiple different brokers, and it determines based off of some mathematical equations, this is a potential setup for what's called a BAT or the this or what that, some type of harmonic scan. What exactly is a harmonic scan? A harmonic scan is a scan that finds what's called a harmonic pattern. Lots of woo-woo stuff in this. <laughs> there's some, some Fibonacci in there. There's some crazy stuff in there. And with the right tools and the right knowledge, you can actually find a lot of trades with these scans. And that's what I'm going to go over with you today. So let me make sure there's no more questions before I move on. No questions. All right, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Mm, here we go. Share screen. OK. So first, I want to go over a review of what has happened since last week. So last week, these were the pairs that I looked at. Um, I did a video on this and what I thought was going to happen over the week. Uh, this is the different pairs that I did look, throughout, uh, look at throughout the week. It was mostly just a few because I just kind of kept at the top. Um, but it's the way that I'm doing this makes it easy for you to scan through and just kind of look at what they look like throughout, you know, your available time. So this is the, these are the pairs that I looked at last week and the one hour and four hour patterns. So let's look at what EuroCAD looked like before. That's the Euro um, coin and the Australian and the, excuse me, Canadian dollar. So this is what it looked like before. And actually I totally forgot to do this again. So this is, this like, it looks like a butterfly to me. I don't know what this was called. I didn't, um, note it, unfortunately. But basically, this particular pattern, once I get it going, this one right here. So this butterfly looking pattern, these two triangles, that is what's called a harmonic pattern. And it's something to do with how these numbers go together, the distance, right? You don't have to worry about that. Math, no. You don't have to do math, not a problem. Don't worry about it. 
All you know is that this popped up on the scanner and I put it on there and I drew what's called pitchforks. These pitchforks, as you can begin to see here, once it hits that D, it starts to move within these pitchforks. And as you can see, it starts to move towards what's called the median line. Now, there are some rules with this, with using pitchforks, and um, if you decide that you want to learn more, please reach out and I can share, share this information with you. But there are some rules that allow you to make better informed decisions, like 80% of the time it goes this direction if it does this, right? So that's what helps you to make these decisions. So we can see here that the white lines right here, these are the pitchfork for this uh, side of the harmonic scan there. The green pitchfork is for this side right here of the harmonic scan. Okay, so this is the full, this is the one hour. Oops. Here's what it looks like. Oh, this is, sorry, this is uh, going into the 15 minute. So this is the 15 minute. And what I noticed here is because of what I've been learning, I noticed that this was forming what's called a potential bearish pennant, okay? So this bearish pennant is an indication that it's going to actually go down, right? Now we do see with this particular sc uh, scanner that it shows green for up, um, but and it can change in a moment. That's why you have to make sure that you understand what's happening. So I saw a bearish pennant. You can see a little bit what it looked like closer. I even got a 15 pip win here. You know, past results um, not guaranteed nor dictate your future success, right? But this is what happened for me. I had a 15 point pip win. Now after, so this is after a week, right? I think that I, I think I took that trade like the first day, okay? Um, after a week, this is what it looks like on the four hour. So right here is that pennant I called, right? It looks a little different because we're on the four hour chart, so the one hour. I called a four hour channel here, right? And when it hit here, it broke out of that channel, shot up, came right back down. And as you can see, it's stuck around this four hour um, support and resistance line. So it did go down just like this pennant anticipated, right? It did come out about here, but it did go down. And whoa, I know this looks a little crazy, so let me make sure that I move this so you can, ooh, no, not that. I don't know what just moved, but we're gonna move this one down here so we can discuss what's happening because I know this is a lot on here and it's not meant to be confusing so let me just point out what's going on all right so these yellow lines right here whoops right here this quarter th this thing that says quarter theory okay so I don't think I have all of the data on this, but basically the gist is, hey Kent, thanks so much for joining. The gist is for quarter theory that every 25 pips, or they, I was told 50, but I've noticed that the 25 pips are a little bit more accurate. But your your price tends to stay within these quarters, so every 25 to 50 pips. And I've noticed that this is, this is just truth. Let me show you. Right, so those yellow lines are the quarter theory. So we see that right here, they stayed within. They stayed within, right? They may have bounced up and down the, between the lines, but they stayed within, okay? So that's what the yellow lines are for. So to kind of help you clear it up a little bit, oh, it's, I forgot it's a picture, sorry. <laughs> um, we also see that it's playing within that particular pitchfork, right? It hit, it came down, it hit the median almost to the pip, played around within this channel right here, hit the median, actually it went a little bit lower than the median, um, and then shot right back up past the top and then came back down. So these, pitch, these pitchforks are incredible and they can allow you to create a lot of additional income. Obviously, past results, not typical, okay? But it's possible. Knowing how to invest yourself with these 
and obviously if you if you're a newbie please 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 do it in demo account until you feel comfortable enough doing it in your live account but this is what it looks like okay right now or as of the time that i was doing this this presentation for you so you're a jpy before so this is what it looked like before what do we see here this purple channel right here this is the weekly channel so when this harmonic scanner popped up i think i was about here when it did but this is a particular scan that says it's going to go up and it sure enough did it actually smashed through take profit three we see that it um, played around the daily uh, support and resistance line here we see that it played within the pitchfork right this green dash right here it even came right down let me do that again you can see that right here not only was it playing around the weekly channel it also hit the uh, end of the pitchfork and shot right back up okay hey john thanks for joining so that's what it looks like on the one hour this is is it the zero yeah so this is a little bit more opened up so you can see a little bit what happened um so again you can see that it's currently in a downtrend with this 50 ema close as well as the um 200 ema close both of them are red the 50 is below the 200 and the price is below the 50 so this is in a huge downtrend right now um you're probably going to be looking to get into a um some cells here because it's also at the bottom of the weekly trend and it looks like it's actually trying to overcome a support resistance line right here okay all right so euro japanese yen uh is that the same one euro japanese yen one hour uh, i'm not sure why there's two here sorry about that uh 15 minute this is what it looks like Oh, so this so from here with all those with all the quarter theory that I was telling you about before, we go down a little bit deeper into the 15 minutes so you can see what it looks like. And we see maybe there we go. We see that again, it is dancing along that weekly channel. Lots of points of resistance here. It hits this um, 200 EMA and then breaks through. Looks like it's coming back to pass and check, and that's why another reason why I say it's going to sell. So does this. This also says it's going to sell. So by the way, this uh, indicator down here in the bottom, this is something that's provided to the members um, who participate in what I was talking about with the tools, mentorship, and everything. So if you want that, let me know. But yeah, so the Euro Japanese Yen looks like it's going to go into a sell. And um, that was a week ago. Okay. So now we see that it's actually moved up into the weekly channel and it's trying to break through again, right? Right here, right here, okay? This is on the four hour. This is not the one hour and the 15 that we were looking at just a second ago. This is the four hour and it's playing along that daily line, right? That's what that blue horizontal line is. That's the daily, one of the daily um, support resistance lines that I was able to determine. We see that it's playing around there. I know, ooh, lots of stuff. Again, the yellow quarter theory. We um, and as I've spoken about before, the big thick line here because it's so so many candles. That's the 200. The thick line here is um, the 50 EMA. And again, we're in that weekly channel, which is that purple cross up. So again, I know that it looks like a lot. Just bear with me. All right. So again, we have this right here, which is the harmonic pattern that was picked up last week for this scan so i added a green up pitchfork median is here lower parallel is here right so we see that it's going up i added the white one going down right and we can see that it's been playing within the pitchfork till it broke out here and started continuing along the um, weekly channel All right, so NZD CAD before. So this was last week. 
here's what it looked like. Again, this is from one of those tools that tells me, hey, here's a potential harmonic scan and something you might want to look at. So this is in the four hour. I uh, added in the EMAs, the pitchforks. Uh, this was the one hour from last week. Addition uh, added the tool, the uh, indicators in. 15 minute showing what you what it looked like. Uh, showing you potential or what I got had gained at the time. So I had actually gained a 1% increase um, in my demo account when I had done this because again I was some testing some stuff. So what it looks like now a week afterwards. So we can see that on the four hour, it probably it looks like it may have potentially hit stop loss, but it shot right back up and began going into that upper pitchfork. Hey Debbie, thanks for joining. We see that there is the positive 200 EMA, which means that it's in a uptrend a positive 50 EMA, which means it's in an uptrend. Now it still could um, come back down. Uh, some of the things that I've learned is that, you know, if the 50 is above your 200, it's a major uptrend, um, but right now it's currently below the 200, so it still could come back down. And we actually see that, right? We see that there's a trend line here. It could come right down to this point here, right? It could even go even further because it has come up to the median of this pitchfork. And I can't remember the exact percentage, but it was a very high percentage that I want, I want to say 80% of the time, based off of somebody's prior lab work, um, they would come back down, right? I don't remember how, how steep it would be, but again, that's based, you have to make a decision based off of your level of risk, off of what you know about the markets and what you are able to see from here, right? We do see that it is um, red, which means uh, the hole is saying that it's going into a downtrend. So we have a lot of confirmation that it's going to go down, but some major comp uh, things that are telling us that it could still go up, right? Because it's still in this particular um, harmonic scan. New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar. Ooh, this looks crazy, right? Here's why it looks crazy. Do I change it? No, I didn't. All right, so right now, this area right here, oops, right there. There's actually two harmonic scans in this, okay? The purple one you see, which is this part right here, which both of them are actually that beginning part, okay? They, both of them fit exactly on those points, but the purple one ends about here, okay? This was called last week. I'm not sure what's going on. There we go. So the purple ends here. This was called last week, right? And that's what this pitchfork, I don't know why it's not drawing, thank you. This pitchfork and the white pitchfork were drawn on. But if you look, now there's a yellow one and a purple one, an extra one, right? So right here, there's one side of it and here's the other side. And it actually came off of last week's harmonic scan. So there's a four hour harmonic scan that came off of last week's harmonic scan that's literally point to point of the same thing. Pretty freaking cool. Like, I mean, it's amazing all of the crazy woo woo things that happen with Forex. It's awesome. Um, hey Debbie, thank you, appreciate that. All right, so let's go ahead and keep going because I'm not actually giving the full everything yet. Oops. Okay, NCDG, uh, New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen before. This is what it looked like. I did lose on this one, uh, but it continued to go up. <clears throat> and actually, I think it may have gone through my take profit. I can't remember. Uh, so this is an NZ, uh, New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen on the 15 minute. After, this is the four hour. So it broke through my box, came back up and began playing within those levels again. All right, it's also playing within that four hour channel, right? And this is from last week. Uh, we see that it's above, right? All the things I talked about before. On the one hour, again, lots of things. It's okay. This is what I want you to see through here. So 
there's these green lines. This is from that pitchfork on the one hour down on here on this corner that came up and the price, oops, the price came back into this pitchfork and began to play around in it. Is that not nuts? That's one of the reasons I think pitchforks are so powerful because they can do so much and you can make so many more accu potentially accurate trades, right? It's all based off of your education and um, how much time you devote to learning this skill set, right? So that's the current one hour on here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and draw out today's week or this week of items because that was all last week, what, I, what they look like before, what they look like now. This week, uh, there's a whole slew of different ones. So we're just going to go over them really fast. If it'll let me. Oh, there we go. So these are the scans that I'm going to be looking, going to be looking at this week, uh, GBP and ZD, JPY, et cetera, et cetera. So if you want to take a screenshot, I'll let you. Screenshot, screenshot, screenshot. Uh, okay, good. <laughs> so first one is the Australian dollar, US dollar, four hour deep crab. So this is um, actually one of the ones that was called last week. Whoops. So this is what it looks like from that tool, okay? Basically what I did is I looked at the tool, took a screenshot of all these vertical lines about where to put my particular um, pattern, and then I put them onto my trading view. So this is the one for Australian dollar, US dollar. And by the way, um, this tool tells you potential entry, stop loss, and take profits. Uh, this is what the Australian dollar JPY looks like. Right, this is just what they all look like. So we're gonna take a quick brief, brief look. We've got one that looks like it's gonna go up, gonna go up. Looks like it already hit the stop, uh, excuse me, take profit. But because again, those pitchforks are so powerful, we're gonna, add, we're gonna add them on there and then we're going to see what it looks like throughout the week. So GBP AUD, pretty, pretty uh, big there. This is actually a very long one. So this is all the way back from January 15. Uh, the crab. So this one was called February 15th. Thank you for the love. Appreciate it. Right. So here's with some uh, harmonic scans coming out. This is the GBP NZD. So this is another one we're going to be looking at. This one indicates that it's going to go down, but it's already hit the third take profit from this suggested trade. So it may go up. It may go down. Right. We're going to go over some of that today. Deep bat. So this is one that's supposed to be going up. Again, everything can change, but we're going to uh, pinpoint what's possible here. Another one that's going to go down. Now, NZCAD, NZD CAD, I, I wanted to point this out because I was, I was so, so excited when I saw this. It was, I don't know, I, I just nerded out. I geeked out. It was great. So here's the H4 on the NZD CAD, which is the New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar. This is what it looks like right now. All right. Here's the H1. So they're both sharks, right? They're both expected. Oh, no, that can't be a shark. It says, is it the same one? I guess they're different types of sharks. Regardless, um, it's already hit take profit on this one. And so let's go ahead and look at these different ones. So going back to trading view, we'll start with AUD USD. Okay. So right now on the one hour, I've shown you some four hours and one hours. We're talking about what the tr chart looks like right now with what I've got. So actually, let me, that doesn't matter. So right here, the plus sign, that is my um, 200 EMA, um, I think it's close maybe. And the particular indicator that I'm using um, gives you the direction that it's probably going to go. So we see that when the price crossed it, it not only went from a downtrend to an uptrend colors, right? It also just kept shooting up as per the whole, as per several other indicators, right? We see that it's broken through the prior four, two, the prior two four hour trends that had been happening. So this this was a channel of four hour. It actually 
broke uh, through, came back up, and then broke out again. And then there was another one here, right? So it's playing around the top of this box. Now, why did I have this box? Let me go ahead and zoom out for a minute. So up here, it crashed through and started to go sideways. So a sideways trend is basically it, the market has come into um, balance. And so you can still trade within that, right? But a lot of people wait until it becomes out of balance, which is exactly what's happening right now. It's, oops, let's do this. So right now, it's at the top of that box and it still looks like it's trying to go up, okay? So let's do some charting here. So let's go back up to the four hour, take off those other channels to clear up our, our um, charts here. So remember, this is that harmonic scan that was called for the, um, last week, or maybe even earlier than that. We're still playing within that pitchfork. So you may not be able to see them, but I do have a couple of support and resistance lines for four hour right here. There, there, and you can see them over here on the side too, the pink tabs over on the prices. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to expand a little bit further and add in another parallel channel. It's a little difficult on the four hour, but I try and be as close as I can in order to give myself the ability to make, you know, better decisions on it. So right now it's in a pretty decent uptrend. This is, again, this is the four hour. So I'm going to turn to the line graph. I don't really see a whole lot of confirmations of potential four hour support resistance right now. Gonna look a little higher. So there one might be one right there. So we're gonna add that in. Yep, that looks like a good one. Lock that, put that on my four hour template. No questions, awesome. Okay. And I think we'll do one more. All right, so when I go back to candles, you can see how they kind of <clears throat> play around within those support and resistance lines, right? So back here, sorry, this is so slow. <laughs> so back here, we can see that it played within that area and then shot up and did a check and then came back, right? So that's why I added them. I added them a little bit above because it looks like it might be moving up. And I kept the ones below because obviously it can always go down too. So that's the four hour. After I've added the parallel channel as well as some of the support and resistance lines, I'm actually going to move this over to the right now more. Now, you can unlock this and drag it over, but I like to be more precise. So I actually click on the settings and then I go to coordinates and I change the bar. So right now it's at 296. So right here, if you can see this line that showed up when I hovered, that's line two, that's bar 296 on this chart, which means there are 200, that bar is the 296th piece of data for this chart. Okay, so I actually want to make it more. So seven, eight, nine, zero, uh, one, two, three. So let's just make it 303. Oh, maybe it's not that many bars. One, two, three. Oh, one, two, three. Oh. One, two, three. That's fine. We'll leave it there for now. I can always change it later. <laughs> so we see that it is working its way on breaking out of this box. Yes, the current price is above the box and it is and it has hit the 200 EMA which indicates ooh this is this might be a big 
uh, jump here, right? But it doesn't necessarily mean that, right? Because the, the EMAs, um, those allow you to also use them as for support resistance lines. So this is a really great opportunity to check this out. So what I do is I come over here and I create a circle about that area. Let me take turn off the magnet. And I'm going to make it the color of my four hour. So I'm going to make it purple. So that I know that when this is happening, there was something happened right here. It's on lockdown. All right, cool. Anything else? So we see here that the hull, oh, the hull won't work here. So ignore that. <laughs> but the 50 EMA, which, <coughs> which is a shorter moving average, is green. And it's also below price. So an indication that it's going to go up. We also see that it's above the quarters, it's hitting that next quarter, so it could also go down because that is support and resistance. But again, lots of other ways, and this is a really big swing trade, so that's why I go um, deeper. So let's look at the one hour. All right, so. I don't like how this four hour turned out on this chart, so what I tend to do is I will unlock it and move it to where it's a little bit more accurate. And then since this is more tied to the green, to the one hour, I'll change this to the one hour and make sure the visibility is on the four hour as well. That way I know I can see where that went or that where that came from. So we, we do see that it has hit the bottom of this particular, well, yeah, it has hit the bottom of the channel and it's going back up, which is expected, right? It usually goes, goes back through. So it's expected to at least probably hit, you know, the quarter theory and potentially keep going. So how else can we determine this? Again, we have the 200 and the 50 in green and below the price. The 200 is about to swap on the, the 50. And I don't quite know what that means, but I'm pretty sure it means something. Oh, no, this is not 15 minute yet. And if we come over here to AUD USD, this other chart, we'll be able to see the MACD as well. We're on the one hour. So MACD is saying it's a buy. Right? The blue's on top, red's on bottom, the columns are green, so it's saying that the one hour is a buy, which everything else is supporting too. We have the P stars, we have the Heikinashi candles. So this is a saying that it's it's probably gonna go up. Hey Ronald, thanks so much for joining. So let's go back here. And let's look at the 15 minute just to check some stuff out, right? So going on the lower time frame, it's currently looking like it's in a small downtrend or potentially um, coming back to hit this. But we also see that uh, one of my tools here is telling me it's in an up up thing. And so this is a, this one right here is actually 28 indicators in one or some crazy number like that. And so there's 28 or however many there are all coming together to agree that this is what is happening right now. So it is still saying it's in, it's in a buy. We have the 50, we have the 200, both being green and both under the price. So this is probably, honestly, a buy. So I'm going to change my color on here so that we can look at those later. And I'll, I'll go through and make some, some actual in-depth stuff. So that's, what's, that's going to be the process here, right? Now AUD JPY. So now that I've said all of that before, you'll be able to follow along a little bit more quickly with what we're doing. So if, I, if you have any questions, please let me know down below. All right, so here's what's happening with the AUD JPY. So last week, you can actually see this right here. Last week it called this harmonic scan right here. And now this was the up, upward pitchfork this was the downward pitchfork. The green, the green was down. I don't know why. The white was up this time. And as you can see, price
price not only hit the median, came all the way down, and hit the bottom of the bottom facing um, pitchfork, so it went from the up for the up facing fork to the downward facing fork, hit it just slightly below, and then started coming back up and playing within the green pitchfork. Now, what's really cool about this is right here, the 200 went from green to red, and when it hit here again, it went from red to green. So again, this is a really great indication of when to get out, when to get in. Um, you probably could have even gotten in right there and out here on on uh, the pitchfork, which would have been fifty pips. Fifty pips in a day and eight hours, right? Because this is the four-hour time candle. So there's a lot of opportunity here for you. But for this week. This is the one that was called. So that's the one we're going to be zooming in on today. I'm going to go ahead and leave the original pitchforks there because we can see that it's actually trying to start playing even more so in there, right? So we see that, come on, the 200 is saying up, the 50 is saying up, the whole is saying up. And that harmonic pattern is actually up. I think it actually hit uh, Take Profit 3. Hey, Marilyn, thanks for joining. So again, what I do is I get on a parallel channel. Make sure it's the right setting. And I look for support and resistance lines. So right here looks like one. If you can see that, I think you can. And without look going here, so it looks like it might be it. So that's the four hour, so I'm going to go into the one hour now. Playing in the up, 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 everything is saying up. So this is an old take profit, gonna get rid of that. This is an old take profit, gonna get rid of that. Oops, I don't know what I just deleted. I guess nothing. All right, uh, we see that it has hit the median here. Hit one of the pitchfork items there. So let's draw our pitchfork. Okay, and then one more. Right there. Oh, I want to make that white. So I've added the pitchforks, right? We are moving up past the quarter theory lines. Right, so this is looking to break through that. Again, do more research. 
So everything looks like it's supposed to be up. That also looks like it's supposed to be up with the MACD. Let's go down to the 15 minute. Everything looks like it's supposed to be up. Even that indicator is telling me that it's up. So this is potentially going to keep going through. But look, oh no, it's a red, right? So I'm gonna go down my one minute, see what it looks like down here. And that one is telling me, eh, I might not wanna get in just yet, right? It's the same indicator, but it's on the one minute. So there's other stuff going on. So again, this is why it's important to have education, tools, mentorship, and community. So overall, I think for the week, I guess I can't really give a large projection for the week. I mean, maybe I could, but I haven't gone out to the monthly, weekly, and everything like that. But right now, it looks like it's going to continue to at least go down for a little bit, maybe even come and hit that, um, and then go back up. So the harmonic scan says up, so we'll go with up green. <laughs> All right, AUN, excuse me. So this one needs to go to the four hour. All right. So right now it looks like we're in a pretty heavy sell, but this harmonic pattern says it's supposed to go up. So interesting, right? Let's uh, let's go ahead and turn off some of these things. I'll leave it on. Uh, no parallel channel. I don't know why this keeps moving. Yes, Marilyn, positive vibes. Yes, yes, yes. All right, so right now it looks like to be a pretty low um, parallel channel here. Let's get our pitchforks on. Okay, so based off of this, I'm expecting it to go towards the median. Let's get one more pitchfork on there. So, because again, <laughs> with investing, it can go either way. So from what I'm seeing right now is it could potentially hit this white pitchfork and move right back down this channel here, hit the channel and come back up and play within that. It could very well do that. And then instead of coming down, it could just keep following this green line up right? Because harmonic scans have some very powerful woo-woo things that happen. <laughs> I don't know how to say it other than that until unless you go through the courses that I've gone through. All right, so I've done the two pitchforks. I have done the channel. Let me go ahead and do support resistance line possibilities. I think... This is probably a good one for the four hour and likely this one as well. This would be more accurate. All right. Yep, okay. So I've done the pitchforks, I've done the support and resistance lines. Uh, let's go ahead and go down to one hour. One hour says it's turning to a buy. Let's go ahead and expand that a bit. Add in our parallel. 
By the way, you don't have to do all of this. If you just want to follow one particular pair, that's fine. But because I am trying, excuse me, I am working through what I've been learning and testing other things with my demo account, I'm doing a lot of different pairs and, a lot, and um, um, same process again to build on my RAS and make sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, right? Uh, one hour. So this one looks like it's going up. Anything else? All right. So here, yep, that would be a really good one for one hour. And that one. Thank you for the love, appreciate that. Cool, so those are working within the support and resistance lines, so that, that was pretty accurate. We can see that it's currently trying to go past that channel, right, right there. And so if we go down to the 15 minute, it looks like it's also trying to do a sell. Do I have that turned off? I do put my SARS on there and it says that there has been indication of a sell as well on the 15 minute. So it looks like it still has a ways to go. So it could hit that and come right back up and follow that channel. Or it could keep going and stay within here with these lines. But from what I can tell, I think this is just going to keep going up. So that's basically what I'm, what I do. And I, I could go through the rest of these, but it's the same process. Um, but if you would like to know more, if you would like access to the tools, the training, the mentorship, the community that I do, please feel free to reach out because I can only do this when I'm when I'm able to. I can't necessarily do it every day. And so if you're really wanting to learn this, you, it's not something that you can just do whenever you have the time. I make the time, but I also plan things out. I do this on my Sundays so that one, I can teach you what's possible and show you what I'm learning. But two, this is allows me to have the setup for the week for potential trades. So again, thank you so much for watching. My name is Cassandra, aka the Daily Wealth Ninja. And feel free to join me on my uh, Facebook page. Uh, it's Walt Daily Wealth Ninja. If you send me the message night owl tonight at 10 p.m central 11 p.m eastern one of my mentors will be teaching for an hour for free so be sure to send me that message it will put you on my facebook messenger list where you will occasionally receive information like trainings um you know other things that will help you with your trading uh, experience and of course ways for you to look, get stuff free stuff from me you're so welcome marilyn i'm so glad i could provide you with value so again, if you want to learn more, feel free to reach out. Um, otherwise, be sure to get connected with my Facebook Messenger by saying Night Owl. And I also have a free group. There should be a link somewhere above, below this video. So thanks so much for watching. Have a wonderful and prosperous rest of your day. And I will see you on the next one. Bye.